everybody, and round three has been done. So welcome to the round three review. Uh, lots and lots of high scores this week. Actually, some massive scores this week. Um, and there was uh, some unlucky losers who got massive scores. I mean, I lost the worst team in the league. So that's a bit unfortunate as well. But oh well, um, what can we do? A uh, few, few serious injuries happened this week as well. Um, Dash has lost Sandlands for six, seven weeks. Um, Sugar's lost Rob Murphy, could be for the season. So, um, and hopefully those people are okay and with the injuries, but these things happen. So, without further ado, I'm here, of course, I'm here with my lovely assistant, Melly, again. Hello, Melly. Alright. So, I'll go through the first game. First game is Seek and Destroy versus Rangers Anonymous. Now, uh, Rangers and Almost got a, put up a massive score here. The score was 296 to 356. So well done to Kenner. Um, it's amazing what happens when he puts his team together. Um, full forwards were tied here this week. 28 piece for Jess Hogan, Chad Dixon. That's a pretty good score for a full forwards. Half forwards, nothing really to write home about. Taylor Walker got the edge there at 31. Utilities were both pretty good as well. I mean, 80 for Dangerfield, 83 for five. Um, the midfielders. Sam Mitchell got 46. Dylan Shield for second shot got 39. So they're both pretty well there. Um, Hampson was pretty good in the ruck. Now, with Hampson, I reckon he's a really good tap ruckman, but I reckon Avar Marich is better, better around the ground. So if Marich is back this week, Hampson will go, and he might, and Kenner might not have that dominance in the ruck. Hampson got 39 hitouts. Now, both halfbacks were absolutely awesome this week. And probably the best two halfbacks I've really checked to see who the team of the week is at the moment. But Joel Selwell got 83 for Kenner as a halfback, and Matt Prittis got 77 as a halfback for for Seeking Destroy for Vossi. So that was pretty good there. Um, all in all, it was a pretty good win for Kenner. 356, the big, big win. It's a win by, what's that, 60 points. So well done, Kenner. Unlucky Vossi. Almost cracked that 300. Uh, you did well that first week. But let's get going a bit better, mate. Let's get going a little bit better. But well done, and well done to Kenner. All right, so the next game we've got is Maltese Falcons versus Sugar Daddies. Now, once again, another big score. Uh, and these scores are just, just they're just going through the roof. Um, Sugar Daddies beat Maltese Falcons today, 349 to 296. So there we go, once again, Fenny, can stand, crack that 300 just a little bit short, mate. But Sugar Daddy's well done, 349. It's why you're one of the highest scoring teams in the competition. Uh, the full forwards weren't that great. Uh, 13 there, a piece there, so they weren't too good there. Um, here we've got Jack Gunston and, and half forwards and Jared Waite. Jared Waite outdone Jack Gunston there, 38 to 24. But uh, Jack Stevens' utility for Maltese Falcons was awesome. 95, Apple got 86. Pretty average for Apple, but let's be honest, it's still a pretty, very, very good score. I would have been wrapped with 86. Uh, and Gaff in the midfield was pretty good as well, 55 for, for Fennec, while Murphy got 44. Unfortunately, he won't be there next week for Sugar. Um, in the ruck, so let's be honest, that was a massive score by Max Gorn. 68 points in the ruck compared to 19 from Tom Nichols. So we know where the game was won there. Um, 68 from Max Gorn, that's pretty, pretty good. And he actually like beat Goldstein, but Goldstein was also himself. We'll go through that later. A halfback, a bit of an issue for, for Fennec there. I mean, Armitage has been very good all, all year, but he only got 45 this time. And Trelaw got 63 for, for Sugar. And, I mean, Luke Dowhouse couldn't get his 13 tackles like he did last week, but he had a pretty awesome game, 30, 31 possession, a couple of goals. But he only got 14 as a tackle, and Mitch Robinson only got eight. Um, I mean, multi Falcons can look at a few other options. I mean, Cripps had a very, very good game. Robinson all around had a very good game, like even as a halfback. Um, but have a look at Cripps. He's lead to the league in clearances, I think. He's getting eight, nine tackles a game. So maybe Fenny needs to have a look at him. Um, but yeah, Sugar, well done. I think you might still be undefeated, which can go on past history. Three and zip. That's pretty good, Sugar. 349. So good score to you. Uh, next game. With great sadness, I, I bring up this game. It's me losing to the worst team in, in uh, Stiff. But um, in, in all fairness, Stiff, he got his team perfect. He put him in the right position. So Stiff won 341 to 318. I'm disappointed myself because that's the, what, 318. That's the third time I've scored, uh, you know, plus 300, 3, 15, 16, 318, 330, and I'm 1 and 2. So it's pretty disappointing. But the good thing is I'm scoring high. 
Uh, full forward, I need to figure out what's going on because straight shooting was very, very crap. Um, but Tom Hawkins for Stiff, 28 points, four goals for. Awesome effort there with Tom Hawkins. And, and in the end, got him over the line. Um, buddy for me, 45. And Nick, I mean, I got lucky. I could have got smashed, to be honest, because Nick Rewalt had uh, in, uh, what, a quarter and a half, got 28 points as a half forward, then got concussed. So Stiff could have got a massive score, to be honest. And uh, let's be honest, though. Uh, I'm being honest a bit here, aren't I? Aaron Hall at Utility, 97 points. A fantastic effort. I mean, Aaron Hall's come from nowhere. Me and Stiff actually were, were pretty much fighting over him in the draft, and Stiff got in just before me for Aaron Hall, and he got 97, as I said, in Utility. He's been awesome all year. It was a Harakas for me. Tried him in Utility, and he doesn't spawn. He got 78 points, so he'll probably get a run again next week. Um, in the midfield, Hanabry got 47. Well, Lockie Hunter got 37. So Hanabry was the only midfielder that really shown here. Uh, in the rucks, Mumford, 33 hit outs, while Nick Knapp got 34. Now, Mumford also got 10 tackles, by the way. But I'm lucky with Nick Knapp because Nick Knapp was getting smashed by Sam Lance. And then he got injured, and that's when Nick Knapp started getting some hit outs. So I'm lucky there. And both uh, halfbacks, 70 for Zach Merritt and 74 for Scott Thompson. So they're both pretty very good scores for halfbacks. Well, Michael, Michael Barlow, 21 as a tackler compared to Jack Bonney. I've got you as a tackle, mate. And you only get three. Two tackles and four free kicks against. You're dumped next week. That's fair. He's dumped. Um, but, yeah, in all in all, I think Stiff's got a pretty good combination there with Aaron Hall and Zach Merritt because at the moment they're doing what they're supposed to do. So all in all, I reckon his team's going to be, if he can get that team together and that team consistency, he's going to be pretty good. He has mentioned Loba could be up for trade if anyone's interested in that. Um, and I'm interested if people listen to my full forwards. I mean, I should have played Cyril. We kicked three goals. Instead, Jake Stringer does nothing. But, you know, obviously it doesn't look like forwards have a good games against Hawthorne. This year, that's what, that's what the trend is. So well done, Stiff, um, on that win. So congratulations. Next game. Uh, now, speaking of Nick Nat dominating, uh, Nick Nat dominated because Aaron Sandlands got injured, and that result saw no dumplings, 307, defeated by Dan Cole on rolling, 318. So Cole got a bit lucky there, to be honest. And that's the second week uh, Dash has gone over 300 and, and lost. So... Bit unfortunate for, for Dasher there. Um, Eddie Betts was all right at 19. Liz Thomas done nothing for on rolling. Half forwards. I mean, Kenley's been a bit disappointing. Uh, both half forwards didn't do that well. But in the, in the utility spot, Pendlebury got 75. Now that's about average. And Steph Martin, well, looks like you saved yourself because you got over 60 as utility this week. If you got under 60, Polly was going to get rid of you. So it looks like you saved yourself with 66. Uh, the midfield here is a story here. Heath Shaw, 49. Brandon Ellis, 61. 61 points in midfield. Pretty good, but it actually wasn't the highest midfield he scored around though. And then in the ruck, uh, Hickey, 32, and that's where, as I said, that's where the game was lost. Aaron Sandlin's only got 11. He only played a quarter in it in five minutes until he got punched in lungs. He's going to be out for six, seven weeks now. Luckily, Dash can bring in McAvoy, who's been getting about 30 points, so that won't be bad there. But if Sandlin's probably only played 10 more minutes, he he would have got uh, got him over the line. See you later, would have got him over the line for, for Dash. So that's unlucky. And Cole, you got lucky again last week. Mick lost Rockleaf this week. Dash lose Sandlands. And you've got over the line for two wins. However, you are scoring high, so I do have to give you that. Um, the best perform... There's two other good performances in this game, by the way. Josh Kenny got 84 as a halfback, including 13 tackles. Um, so that's a, a return to form for Josh Kenny. Talon's on 66 as a halfback. But um, both tackles got pretty high here. 20 for Kieran Jack, but 31 for Andrew Swallow. Second time in two in three rounds, he's got about 30 points as a tackler. So well done there. Um, I mean, Dash, I oh, know it's could have, should have, would have. Jack Zebel, 19 tackles. Uh, you had him originally as utility, but then you moved him into interchange. But 19 tackles, very, very good effort. Probably one of the best efforts. Um, a couple of players you could have played. Duncan and Enright had very, very good games for, for your Dash, and that's a couple of people to look at there. So, and Coley uh, and Birchall and Pierce Hanley had very good games in the midfield too, considering both the midfield or one of the K3s was a bit disappointing. So that's someone to look at too. Um, and now the final game of the round was the highest scoring game of the round, the most exciting game of the round. Jacob Sabroni, 349, would have been the, I think, the second highest score or third highest score. I can't remember now. I forgot where everyone scores. Lost to Gods of Olympus last year's champ champions. I can't say reigning champions because apparently he's still the champion. 365. A massive, massive score. And that comes off the back of the Golden Jew. The Golden Jew is back. 
He got 38 hitouts. Apparently, Michael Sell has been racist just now. Uh, five goals. So he got smashed in the hitouts by almost 30, and he's still like, got 130 points as utility. 130 points as utility. I believe, and I'll have to backtrack, but I believe 130 is the biggest utility score we have ever had in this competition. So well done to Todd Goldstein. Um, Tom Lynch almost won the game for Jacob Jabroni. He's got 48 as a half ball, kick, four goals, three, 14 kicks, 10 marks. Tom Lynch has been he's been awesome this year. Um, he's leading the Coleman at the moment. Tom Mitchell, once again, serviceable in 75, uh, 75 as utility. Basha Hooley for Michael got 57 in the midfield. Pretty good. But Lee Montagna got 65, best midfield score of the season to date. Um, as the Rucks both got averaged 30 and 36, so they're both pretty good, but they both tied each other out. And the halfbacks tied, um, you know, equal each other out, 65 and 69 from Parker and Shu, respectively. Um, so that was, you know, a very, very good score by Michael, 365. I think that's the highest score of the year so far. And well done, Todd Goldstein, 130 utility. So that's the best score we've had to date. Um, so if I just go over the team of the week, uh, team of the week this round is at full forward, Tom Hawkins with 28, um, Tom Lynch, 48 at half forward, Todd Goldstein, as we mentioned, 130 utility, Lee Montagna, 65 as a midfield, Brandon Ellis, 61 as a midfield, Max Gorn, 68 in the ruck, Josh Kennedy, 84 as a halfback, and Andrew Swallow, 31 as a tackler. All right, so to the ladder now, and three teams undefeated. Now, two of these teams, I'm going to say three of these teams are the worst teams ever in free play. Um, and that's you as well, uh, Coley. Sugar, we've almost cracked the 1,000 points after three rounds. 995, he's on top. Rangers Anonymous, uh, and also on rolling, all undefeated, three and zip. At 2 and 1, he's Renegades. I say he's the worst team, but he's beaten him in a ladder. Um, he's 884 points. Jacob Jabroni is the only team over a thousand so far. He is one and two, so for the highest scoring team, he's one and two. I'm second with nine sixty six points. I'm sorry, I'm sixth, second of the top teams with four points. Um, on nine sixty six points, God of Olympus got his first win is on nine and twenty four points, and that's pretty boosted by his last week's score. Uh, second destroy, he's also got a win. He's on eight hundred sixty three points. Um, so that's the second lowest points total for the competition. Maltese Falcons and no dumplings. So Dash and Fennec still haven't yet, yet to register a win. And Dash is actually the lowest scoring team over here. Scored over 300 the last two weeks. So guys, look, good good round. Very high scoring round. It th looks like everyone's almost got their team sorted out and figured out exactly where they want to put each other, where they want to put their players. Um, next round, the next round starts um, Friday. It is an eight o'clock lockout this week because why? Where's the game? Yeah. Oh, the game's in Perth. West Coast versus Richmond, Richmond apparently. Thanks, Michael. Special uh, studio audience. So, um, yeah, at 8 o'clock or 8, 10 or 8, 20 lockout, whatever it is, you can have a look. Um, 8.30 or Michael's telling me. Anyway, well done and thanks very much. See you.